today we're going to be looking at the angle between two curves when we're looking at uh, differential calculus. Um, this is the last uh, lesson in this series for differential calculus for the U11 um, 2 unit slash 3 unit. Now this is actually extension 1, so if you're just doing the normal mathematics course, you won't need to know this. Um, but otherwise, it is pretty easy, so if you want to have a crack at it, you may as well. Um, okay, so what does it mean to find the angle between two curves? Well, you can see here that we've got two curves. I've used two parabolas this time, y equals x squared and y equals x minus 2 all squared, but they could be anything. They don't have to be parabolas. They could be any sort of curves. But you'll notice that the two curves intersect at this position here. Okay, now at the moment I don't know what that position is, but I do know that, that is what we call our point of intersection. Okay, our point of intersection, or POI. Okay, now when we have a point of intersection, you'll notice that it creates an angle between those two particular curves. And obviously that's why it says angle between two curves. So that's what we're going to be finding, the value of theta underneath these two curves. So it might sound pretty tough, but to be honest, it actually is quite straightforward. First of all, what we need to find, because it's the angle underneath that point of intersection, we need to be able to find the point of intersection. Now, I wonder if you can remember how to do that. Our point of intersection, hopefully you remember, in order to find the point of intersection of two lines or two curves, we use simultaneous equations. Okay, We use simultaneous equations. All right. Um, and we'll, we'll look at that in a moment. So first of all, we need to find the point of intersection, our, so our x and y coordinate, um, by using simultaneous equations. Okay, our second thing, once we've found our point of intersection, our x and y coordinates, we then need to find the gradients, and yes, I would say gradients, plural, of the two curves at the point of of intersection. Okay, so what I mean by that, if you look at our two curves, you'll notice that the y equals x squared, we've got, if we look at the, the curve at the point of intersection, remember it's the same as finding the, the, uh, the gradient of the tangent at that point, you can say it's going to be a positive graph or a positive gradient. Whereas if we look at the y equals x minus 2 all squared, the gradient, which is not really a straight line there, you can see it's going to be a negative gradient. So we've got two different gradients. Obviously one's increasing, one's decreasing. Um, so we need to find the value of those two gradients at the points, um, point of intersection. And then once we've done that, our very last step will be using a new formula that we'll be introducing, which is tan theta equals the absolute value of m1 minus m2 all over 1 plus m1 times m2. Now it doesn't matter which way you put the gradients around, because we're doing absolute value, if it's a negative, it's going to become positive anyway. So it doesn't really matter. Okay, but we're taking the absolute value of it, and then we're doing a shift tan to find what the angle is. Okay, again, sounds like a bit of a mouthful, but it is pretty straightforward when we go through it. So let's have a look for the this first example. We've got y is equal to x squared, and we've got y is equal to, let's take the brackets out, x squared minus 4x plus 4. Just rewritten that as a um, expanded form. Okay. Now, can you remember how to do simultaneous equations when we're looking at to powers of 2, or quadratics? We can often do simult um, simultaneous equations through um, elimination or through substitution, or say substitution is where we need to go with this. We know that y is equal to x squared, so I'm going to put the x squared where the y is, and equals x squared minus 4x plus 4, and we're going to rearrange this all so we can find what x is equal to. Okay, so using my equations, I'm going to take x squared off the right-hand side, which means I'm going to take x squared off the left-hand side. So we're left with minus 4x plus 4 equals 0. Let's get rid of the 4x and put it over here. We're left with 4x equals 4, which means we're left with x is equal to 1. So that's given my x coordinate here of 1. But remember, when we find a point of intersection, we need an x and a y coordinate. 
So once I found x equals 1, all I need to do is put it back into one of these two formulas to find out what the y value is. The first one looks probably easiest. So 1 squared equals 1. So I've got my point of intersection as the point 1 comma 1. Okay, so fairly straightforward. So first thing we've done there, okay, we can tick that off. We've found our point of intersection. The second thing is we need to find the gradient of the two curves at that point of the intersection. Okay, I'm just going to give it more room there. Okay, so thinking back to our last couple of uh, lessons, or well, pretty much all of our lessons in this unit, when we are finding the gradient of a curve, we're actually finding the derivative of that curve. Okay, the derivative of that curve, and we've been doing a lot of stuff on derivatives. Um, this whole unit's been on derivatives, so hopefully you can remember how to find the derivative of the two curves. So if we look at the first one, y equals x squared. So the derivative, or dy dx, or y dash, is simply equal to 2x. Now at that point, x is equal to 1, my y dash is equal to 2 times 1 is 2. Therefore, y dash is my gradient, I'm going to call it gradient 1, is equal to 2. Okay, let's do the same thing for the next graph. We've got y equals x squared minus 4x plus 4. Okay, we could have done it that way, that's fine, but I'll just expand it to make it a little bit easier. So our dy dx or y dash is equal to 2x negative 4. Therefore, at x equals 1, 2 times 1, so y dash is equal to 2 times 1 is 2. 2 minus 4 is minus 2. So our second gradient is equal to negative 2. Okay, so that's my second thing done. We've got my two gradients, my m1 and my m2. And then my third one here is putting it into the formula. Okay, so 10 theta is equal to the absolute value of m1 minus m2. Does not know which one you start with? So 2 minus minus 2 a plus over 1 plus 2 times negative 2. So 10 theta is equal to 2 plus 2 is 4. 4 over 1 plus negative 4 is negative 3. Now remember it's the absolute value of that so it's going to be 4 over 3. And my very last step is I need to get my calculator out and I simply type in shift 10 4 over 3, get my angle, we'll put it to the nearest minute, comes up to 53 degrees and 8 minutes. Okay, again, seems a bit of a mouthful, but I think we need to keep reflecting back to the three steps. Okay, again, first step, find the point of intersection. Second step, find the gradient, and I'm going to put it in brackets, the derivative um, of each curve at the point of intersection, and then three, put into our formula, which was absolute value m1 minus m2 all over 1 plus m1 times m2 tan theta equals okay so again there are three steps okay so we're going to look at another question now okay so this question says sketch the curve y equals x squared minus 4 and y equals x squared minus 8x plus 12 on the same axis we need to find the point of intersection at Q, we need to find the value of the gradients at Q, and find the angle between the two curves at Q. So they've been very straightforward in asking each basic question individually. They can just ask you to find the angle between two curves, which you'd have to do B, C, and D anyway. Okay, but the first part they have asked you to do, which sometimes they will ask you, other times they won't. Okay, so we're going to draw or sketch Okay, the two curves. So when I'm sketching these two curves, all I really need to know is where my x intercepts are going to be. So when y equals 0. So in that case, we're doing x squared minus 4 equals 0. 
and then hopefully you recognize the difference of two squares so x minus 2x plus 2 equals 0 therefore x is equal to 2 and negative 2 okay so I'm going to go here and go um, 1 2 1 2 there are my two points of intersection there um, my next one is y equals x squared minus 8x plus 12 okay so again x squared minus 8x plus 12 equals 0 um, you might do the p and s method you might do the cross method it's up to you either case it will be x minus 6 x minus 2 equals 0 okay so x is equal to 2 and positive 6 so we've got 2 already there 3, 4, 5 and 6 so they're my two graphs there so if I now just draw that now if we look at uh, if I draw that there if we put what, um, x equals 0 as well we can say that's going to be negative 4 um, I'm going to draw my second graph there we know that it goes between these two points Okay, it's a bit ugly but yours should be nice and neat so here we got y is equal to x squared negative 4 this is y is equal to x squared negative 8x plus 12 it said sketch so it's a very brief uh, you know, sketch just making sure you have your x intercepts and maybe your y intercept if uh, if possible I could have actually extended this out here and put this up as 12 if I wanted to as well okay so this is part A done so obviously you can see that this is going to be the point Oops, I'll put that from colour. This is going to be the point Q. You can already see that it intersects at the point x equals 2 anyway. But we'll have a look at that next question. Find the point of intersection at Q. Well, we can already see it's going to be x equals 2. But let's just do it the, um, the more mathematical way. Okay, we've got our two different equations. We're going to solve them simultaneously. So y is equal to x squared minus 4. So I'm going to put the x squared minus 4 here where the y is. So we're going to put x squared minus 4 is equal to x squared minus 8x plus 12. Okay, so let's get rid of, um, take x squared off the right hand side, so take x squared off the left hand side. So we're left with minus 4 is equal to minus 8x plus 12. I'm going to pull the 8x across to make it positive. I'm going to take the 4 across to make it 16. So x is equal to 8, get rid of it by dividing it by, 16 divided by 8 equals 2. And that's what we saw anyway. Okay, so it's just reaffirming what we knew. And remember to find my y value. Well, we already know y is going to be 0. But let's put it back in um, to one of these two equations here. So let's put um, x equals 2. So 2 squared is 4. 4 minus 4 equals 0. Up here, so equals 0. So we've got our point of intersection. So our point of intersection is the point 2, 0, which we saw it off the graph in the first place. But if you didn't have the graph, obviously you can do this simultaneously nice and easy. Okay, so now we've done all that, we now need to look at the next part, which is asking to find the values of the gradients at Q. Okay, so what I'm going to do, I'm just going to take this off. I don't really need that anymore anyway. Just going to give me a little bit more room. Okay. So when we want to find the gradient, hopefully we again remember for C, the gradient we know that we need to find the derivative of each graph and then substitute in the value of x equals 2 to find the gradient at that point. So for the first one, we've got y is equal to x squared minus 4. Therefore, dy dx or y dash would be equal to 2x. So at the point um, x equals 2, y dash is equal to 2 times 2, which is 4. Therefore, m1 is equal to 4. Okay, for the next bit, y is equal to x squared minus 8x plus 12. So dy dx or y dash is equal to 2x minus 8. At the point, x equals 2. y dash is equal to 2 times 2 is 4. 4 minus 8 is negative 4. Therefore, m2 is going to equal negative 4. So we've got 4 and negative 4 there. So now, my very last step is I'm going to be putting it into um, that formula that we looked at before. Okay, so for D, our formula is 10 theta is equal to the absolute value of M1 plus M2. 
So m1 minus m2, should I say? So 4 minus minus 4, all over 1 plus m1 times m2. So 10 theta is equal to 4 plus 4 is 8, over 4 times 4 is negative 16, plus 1 is negative 15, but we want to take the absolute value of that. Okay, so all I now need to do is for the last step is I need to put it into my calculator. I'm going to type in here um, shift theta 8 over 15, and it's going to come out to be the nice answer of 28 degrees and 4 minutes if we do it to the nearest minute. Okay, so again, just to reflect upon what we did there. The first step, um, apart from drawing the graph, we found a point of intersection by forming simultaneous equations. The second step, we then found the gradient um, of the points at, or the curves at Q, okay, by substituting in our, um, our x value that we found from our point of intersection. And the last part, we then used the formula tan theta equals absolute value of in order to find out the angle between my two curves. Okay, and that's pretty much it. The questions don't get too much, too more challenging, I guess. The only um, harder part might be your actual uh, derivative, so you're deriving um, your equations. All right, so you might have yes, yeah, this is this more challenging ones. You might have you, you know, a product of a product. You might have um, of a quotient rule question, and sometimes just be careful. You may well have two point of intersections. If you have two point of intersections, then obviously you're going to be finding two different angles. So just be a little bit careful. Okay. Look, I hope this was useful to you. Um, if you're confused at all, please let me know. Give me a bit of feedback, and I can change um, anything that needs to be changed. Have a great day, guys. Um, yeah, let derivatives be with you.